Whoa, look at that. <laughs> All right, how's it going everyone? I think it's about time to do an update on the Walker mower and my $150 engine rebuild that I did at the beginning of the season. I've got about 180, no, 220 hours, 218 hours since the rebuild. <clears throat> And if you haven't watched that video, I'm sure I'll have a link uh, in this video to it. Uh, but what I essentially did is, uh, long story short, this this uh, Walker has had multiple engines, but the, uh, the one that's in it now was replaced as a new replacement unit uh, that I bought. I think it was uh, $1,900. I bought it, I don't know, four or five, six years ago. And uh, I used it for its uh, full lifespan. I believe I got... Uh, I don't remember how many hours, how many thousands of hours, two, three thousand hours or whatever I got out of it and it started smoking and uh, consuming oil, uh, which is what it does. And it, you know, gradually gets worse and worse and it got to the point where it's falling out plugs and, uh, you know, it got to the point where you just can't use it anymore. It starts, uh, you know, following the plug and then you're running on one cylinder and it has no power. So I got to that point with this engine and I took it apart and rebuilt it for $150. Um, when I call a rebuild, it was a, a mild, mild, cheap rebuild. Basically, the the, the issue uh, that happens with them is the rings wear out, the piston rings. And uh, basically, I replaced the piston rings along with some gaskets and you know seals and stuff like that uh, with a hundred and fifty dollar kit that I bought on eBay. I have, uh, like I said, about two hundred and twenty hours since doing that. Uh, I change the oil as like kind of a break-in period at like 50 hours or 20 hours or whatever, how many hours it was. And then uh, I've replaced, I've changed the oil uh, once since then <clears throat> as well. Um, so uh, it is now due for another oil change. Uh, I think I, ch I think I changed it after a couple hours, then I changed it at 50 hours. So it's due for an oil change. It's been about 160 hours or something uh, since it's been changed, I believe they say every 50 or 100 hours you should change it or whatever. I have not added a drop of oil. I have been checking it along the way. Uh, it is a little bit down, and I'm going to show you the dipstick, and we're going to we're going to look at that together. Uh, but uh, when I rebuilt this motor with that mild rebuild, it was going through a quart of oil every hour of running. That's how bad it was smoking and just burning oil, burning oil, burning oil. I have not added oil besides the oil changes. So in the last 160 hours, I have not added any oil on purpose. I wanted to you know, check the oil to make sure it's not going to run too low and have an issue. Uh, but I have not added any oil, okay? I give you my word. I have not added a drop of oil to this in that 160 hours or whatever it was. And I have already checked it, so I know the result. And like I said, it is down a little bit. Um, but I'm going to grab a rag right now and show you guys... Put you on this. Uh... Now, you don't screw it in to check it. I'm going to show you in a minute, but that's what I just pulled out. Okay, you can see the oil is not new. It's got some got some color to it. Does look pretty damn clean though, considering. So we just uh, drop it down. We don't screw it in to check it, and uh, that's where we're at. We're pretty much just at the bottom of the safe zone. So it it's. Kind of needs a little bit of oil. It's probably going to take about a quarter of a quart, maybe a third of a quart. Um, but it's ready for an oil change anyway, so I'm not going to do that. But that's how little oil it's used in 160 hours since its last oil change. Uh, just to show you that you can, in fact, do a simple rebuild. And it is the rings that is your problem and why you're burning so much oil. This is still the same muffler and everything. It... Uh, you can see the motor is nice and dry. It's not leaking. It just, you know, through time burned a little bit. Uh, but again, for 150, 160 hours on that oil, pretty damn happy with that. Is that a, did I just drip that or is that a cut? Okay, no, I just dripped that on there. So, so this video, as I'm sure you already see from the title, is going to be about the charging system. 
I've been having problems with the charging system. Uh, it started with uh, a dead battery to what I thought was that I left my light on that I have here. Let me see if we got any battery power in here. Yeah, we do. Okay, so that light I ended up hitting accidentally and I left it on because I don't have it set up where it only comes on with the key. Uh, so uh, I had a dead battery one morning. Uh, I charged it, so I thought, and I ended up it ended up dying on me and uh, long story short I replaced the battery because I thought that was the issue didn't really do any investigation this was just you know during the mowing season here and uh, so that is a new battery even though it's filthy this whole whole, whole mower is filthy we're gonna clean it up but uh, so that worked for a while but after a couple of days the battery again died which what ended up happening was just it wasn't charging and it slowly wore down from starting it in between lawns and uh, and the battery died so what I ended up doing was I have this parts mower. Now, this is the rectifier regulator that's on the Walker mowers in the in the Kohler engine. This kind of just screws right into the side of the uh, little case there, and then it's cooled inside. Uh, the newer Walker mower that I have over here, this parts mower, has a similar rectifier deal here but it's mounted actually externally it's not mounted on the motor and it plugs in with a different style plug this is the uh, 31 horsepower uh, Aegis AEGIS motor uh, it's made by Kohler it has some similarities but it's also very different it's liquid cooled the, the, the jugs and everything are different the block is different there's a lot that's different but there are a few similarities uh, as to the command pro engine and so what I did at the time is I diagnosed to find out that my rectifier regulator was bad. Uh, there's some tests you can do with a multimeter to check it, and I was getting a uh, a dead short or something in it, and it was a problem. So I replaced it with this unit. I disconnected this unit here. So it's just three wires. You've got two AC wires and then the 12 volts that, that feeds, uh, that actually charges your battery. So these two wires come from your stator inside the motor and then the power comes out in DC form out of this rectifier through this purple wire. <clears throat> that lasted me a good month or so mowing, starting, stopping. Um, it, the battery was charging. I checked to make sure when I left after I did that. Things were fine up until about a week ago where kind of the same process started over again. I thought I left the light on, so-and-so charged the battery. Uh, so what I did is I ordered a new rectifier, thinking that because I changed this rectifier, which wasn't exactly the same unit, it's more of a bulky unit. I think it's a heavier duty unit because this machine here being liquid cooled and fuel injected and it's got an electric fuel pump, I'm sure needed a better charging system. So I thought this was going to be uh, probably capable of handling more power or maybe even outputting more power. Uh, so this is probably supposed to be matched with the stator, uh, which is this here inside that motor, which this is the one from the motor. I've since removed it, which we'll get to in a minute. So these are the two parts from that parts mower. Okay. So, uh, after, <clears throat> after finding out that, or thinking that this must have blown again, I ordered a new one of these. This is the old original one and I installed it. As you can see it right there on the motor. After I did that, I checked and it was not charging. So at this point I said, okay, well, my problem is beyond the rectifier regulator. This rectifier regulator that I had already replaced is probably still good. The original one is not because I know that that day that I replaced that with this, it was charging and working fine, okay? So the only thing left in the charging system is the stator. Uh, I did check it. Uh, with the tests online, there's a little uh, procedure you can do, check for a dead short. You can start it up and see if it's producing AC voltage. It was produ producing a little bit of AC voltage, but it wasn't anywhere near where it should be. And according to my multimeter, it was also giving me kind of a short on one of the, uh, on one of the leads. So not knowing any different, I'm assuming, okay, the stator is the problem. Uh, and not the rectifier. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull the motor out today Which I have a video on 
uh, but I don't think it's really a step-by-step -step video. I've upgraded my camera equipment, my audio equipment, my lighting, all of that stuff. I'm going to set up a couple of cameras and try to do a really good view, uh, detailed removal of uh, uh, engine in a walker mower uh, with hopefully I can get some good camera angles and stuff like that. So I'm going to run a couple of cameras and see what we can do, take my time and, and hopefully get a nice video for you. This is probably a long video. I'm sure you already know by the the timestamp on the uh, video whether it's a long video or not. However, what I plan to do is replace the stator. I've since looked up and apparently this will retrofit from the Aegis Kohler motor will fit the 20 Command Pro. I believe this was a 25 amp unit and I think the original in the Kohler is only a 20 or a 15 amp so I believe this is going to upgrade the charging system more than it even needs to be as well as re fix my problem. Okay, so that's what I planned on doing. In my research, I found that, as a good demonstration, let me grab the one off of this. I guess it's a common thing. This is the flywheel off of the parts motor. It's a common issue for these magnets, okay, which, as the motor spins, spins around this. That sits in between there, and, ma and that's what creates your voltage as the flywheel spins around, the stator stays there, and the magnets uh, create your, uh, your charging voltage, your AC voltage. Okay, uh, what I'm hearing is these become unbonded from the flywheel. This is nothing new. Uh, there's videos on it online uh, of people replacing the flywheel. There's people uh, re-gluing the magnets back in uh, and, uh, you know, all different things like that. So uh, I'm pretty sure that this flywheel is different. It has a different part number. Uh, I don't believe it's interchangeable if that is the case and the issue with my machine. Uh, but I do have, I do know that the magnets are the same and I'm pretty sure the stator is the same. And so if I have... The issue with my charging system is not the actual stator when we take it apart, and it's the magnets that have become unbonded. I'm going to try to either repair them, re-glue them, replace them, or replace this whole flywheel that goes with the stator off the other machine if, it, if it's able to do that. So that is the reason I'm taking the motor out, because to get to the stator, it is under the flywheel way down inside here okay so the only way to do it is remove the remove the motor we got to take this plastic housing off which is a good thing to do every once in a while anyways because you want to clean the debris and stuff out that gets in there so once again i've got another video on removing a walker motor but this is something that you need to do it's uh kind of a thing with walkers a lot of grass and stuff gets compacted in there it builds up it's nice to clean it out because they're air-cooled engines if you keep letting that stuff build up in there, it's going to clog your cooling fins and overheat the motor. And then you are going to burn oil. You're going to burn your rings out. The whole idea is uh, keeping it cool. So for that reason, it's good to clean it out. <clears throat> it's due for an oil change anyways. And I need to fix the starting system or the charging system, uh, which in turn starts it. So, uh, so that's where we're at. So I'm going to get the cameras set up. And uh, that's what this video is going to be about. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to talk through it or what how it's going to end up, but uh, hopefully it's anybody in the same situation that you're having a problem with your charging system. Those are the items that it can be. It could be your, your magnets have become unbonded inside of your flywheel. Your stator could be bad. It could be a dead short. Uh, and um, or it could be your rectifier regulator, which is the other part that I started with. So those are the only parts of your charging system. And, of course, the wiring. There is that one wire that comes out of your rectifier that actually goes up to your control panel that when you turn your key on connects to your battery power in turn recharging your battery. All right. <clears throat> what I like to do first in a project that I don't love, especially something you've done before, is get the hard part out of the way first. To me, the hard part is the stuff underneath, which isn't even hard, but 
We're gonna call it the hard spot. So I'll get you guys situated under here. And here are our, molten, our mounting bolts right here. You've got your drain plug right here when you change your oil. And then you've got these one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There you go. That's what those look like. If you guys don't have one of these magnetic trays, get one. They're awesome. All right. Okay, so just with those four bolts technically right now, your motor is loose, okay? So at this point, it's just a matter of getting clearance to get the motor out. So we need to get rid of a lot of these accessories and stuff that are mounted around it. And it looks daunting, but it's really, it's really not bad at all. All right, next up, I'm working with a 13 millimeter. Gonna go ahead and get this air cleaner assembly out of the way. Where and when I can, I like to just put the screws right back where they came off. The bolts, sorry, not screws. Just to make it easier for reassembly. Gotta bend that bracket up and out of the way. And then we got the whole air cleaner assembly taken right out of there. All right, as you can see, that just opened up this whole area pretty good. Just gotta get this wire out of the way. I don't know why I don't have me a stubby Phillips or regular screwdriver. I gotta remember getting a kit. Your mower probably has a different type of fastener than a Phillips screw holding this wire on. My machine, having been around the block many a times, it's been changed, so. All right, now we're gonna take off the belts. We're gonna take off our, this should be a good view. Now all I do to get this belt off is I start by this top section, getting it over this pulley right here, okay? push it into the other side. Then I lift the, raise the handle up that engages the belt. And then I tuck the belt under that pulley. Okay, now we've got a good amount of slack on it so I can take it off the front pulley. It's a little tight, but it's doable. You gotta kinda like bend the, bend the belt at a little bit of an angle to get it to come out. And being a thick belt, you really got to put a little force into it. And then the same thing over here, you work the belt towards the front. And now I lift this handle up to get it out of the way so I can sneak the belt right under that pulley. There's just enough room to get in between that pulley and the side. And then we're good. I'm actually not even going to bother taking the belt all the way off. off the uh, PTO box here in the front because there's really no need to. We're just removing the motor. So we'll just tuck this belt right up and out of the way. 
All right, now we can remove the drive belt right here. That's just spring tension. We're just gonna push down on this pulley. Take it off that pulley, release that, and then snake that right out. Same thing, lift up on the arm just to be able to get the clearance here. And then, there we go. So that completes everything on this side of the motor to, re to, uh, to take it out. Literally, the motor's, just, the motor's just floating in there right now. All we gotta do is the uh, exhaust side. And the fuel, the fuel hose right here is the only other thing that needs to be disconnected. We're gonna do that at the very end just so we don't have to smell fuel. Here I'm switching to an eight millimeter just to loosen up this cable clamp. It's a good idea before you take this apart, you want to take note. I'm actually going to bring you bring a camera over here and take note exactly what hole and what position that you've got these cables in, just so it's easier to put them back afterwards. Again, yours may be different. You might be in a different position. It might be in a different hole. Giggity. All right, so right here, remove that little clamp. And each of these, gonna wanna cut, there's usually a little strap right here. I think uh, these come with like a metal tab that bends over to hold this on. I've since replaced it with a zip tie and I just cut the zip tie every time I change. So we're gonna go ahead and cut the zip tie right now and we'll put a new one on when we put it back together. That gives us enough slack now. And again, like I said, if we can put anything back in its place temporarily, just so you don't lose it or know where it goes, we'll just take each of these out. One, two. Tuck these up out of the way. All right. Next up, I'm gonna disconnect this wiring harness, which Again, is a little different on mine. You're gonna have kind of a square connector. I've since replaced my connector with this flat style when I change the motor. It's just a little better weather, weatherproof type of connector. This is just a spare wire, that's why it's not connected. But uh, this holds up a little better. And it looks like we got a zip tie in there as well, holding the, tie, holding the wires. Okay. That separates the wiring from the chassis and the motor. Okay. Now the first thing we should have done that I did not mention is disconnect our battery. I have a 7 16th nut and bolt. We actually have a 10 millimeter nut with a 7 16th head bolt. How does that happen? I don't know. Anyways, again, this should have been done first because you don't want to short out any of your wiring. All right. This is our wiring that goes along with the mower. I'm just going to unplug the starter wire. And we have this one right here. This is the positive wire that goes from the battery to the starter. I'm going to disconnect that right there. And again, yours may look different. This is also a 13 millimeter. Even though I'm using a half inch wrench.
this is where you want to make sure that your battery is disconnected because if it's not this would be a live 12 volt wire that as soon as it touched anything metal down here it would be sparking out and arcing out you turn your walker into a welder okay so that's it for wiring we're completely disconnected the motor is free the engine is free from there so at this point we need to disconnect the muffler and these side motor mount bolts fuel line and the motor will be up all right so to remove this shield there's going to be a bolt right here that is broken off on mine it's a bolt right here and then there's two underneath that you can reach in right underneath like this with an extension so the two upper upper bolts are going to look like this again mine's broken off in here so i don't have one I actually just tucked the shield under this other bracket to secure it, so I do have to loosen this bracket just a little bit to be able to get it out. Right underneath here, right there, and right here. And those are 13 millimeter, I believe. I'll tell you in a second. Yep, 13 mil. There's one. And there's your two. Right there. That allows us to move this. out of the way and now we have wide open access as you can see try that again there we go just loosen it up like that loosen up like that I'm gonna go ahead and remove these 13 millimeter these gaskets are usually pretty strong. They're metal gaskets. I've reused them plenty of times in the past and got away with it. And I plan to do the same thing today. Pull these nuts off. One, two, three, four. Okay, now our entire muffler come right off. Okay, this is the other mount, and I don't know if you've noticed, but it's disconnected. It's supposed to be a bolt that goes through here. It's supposed to be a bolt that goes through here and through this mount which holds this mount onto the frame, which holds to here. So typically you would take these two bolts out and this bolt out and remove this mount out of the way completely. But in my situation, either I forgot to put that bolt back in the last time I pulled this motor out, or it vibrated loose and came out. But either way, it's not there anymore, so I don't have to remove it. So we're down to nothing, nothing else in this motor except the fuel line. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, close off the fuel line Disconnect it and we'll pull that motor right out. I use these here. OEM tools 20, what is that? 26, 26518. They're just uh, hose pinch clamps. They don't damage the hose and stop it from leaking when you take one out. Just got these little squeeze clamps right here. Clamp this off before I open it up. So we have minimal spill spillage. And there we go. 
Okay, our motor is completely disconnected and ready for removal. Not bad. So now is where you could use an engine hoist or you can just break your back like I'm about to do. It's actually not that bad. I think it's about 60 pounds to lift up. It does get hung up a little bit when you lift up on it. You do have to like turn it just a little bit to get it out. It's not bad. But this is usually the way I do it. I just get a really good wide foot stance. Try to bend my knees and I lift it right out. It's always nice if you can. What I end up doing is usually lift it out, twist it, and then you can set it down on the frame, regroup, and then lift it up and move it where you need it to go. So I'm going to set up a little staging area for wherever I'm going to end up bringing it. And what that will be is over here on this crate, right here, so we can further disassemble from there. So let me... Uh, Find a good camera angle so you can watch me bust my butt. Okay, now I just kind of rest a little bit, regroup, get a good place to hold on to it. And now it's over to the, over to the staging area. All right, now we have it. Motor removed. As you can see, there's no oil at all down here that's leaked since the rebuild. Good. Good time to check out your belts and pulleys in that area just to make it easier to change now. I'll spin all your pulleys, make sure they're nice and tight. Well, what I mean by tight is not seized and not loose. Everything looks okay. All right, let's dig into her. Just going to remove this fuel pump. So that's out of the way. We're looking to get this plastic cover off. Disconnect our new regulator rectifier so we don't hurt it. As he drops it on the floor. This is the ground wire that connects the motor to this. If you're missing a ground wire, it's another good point that I want to make. First time I ever rebuilt one of these motors, when I went to put this rectifier back in here, I put the two screws and I hooked it up and it didn't charge. The reason it didn't charge is this metal housing is mounted in plastic and it needs to be grounded. This right here needs to connect to the metal of this motor. So there's usually a little metal tab that goes from this bolt right here over to the bottom bolt holding this in. Sometimes there's just a little jumper wire. Okay, so this bolt right here goes into this metal. You has either this wire or a metal tang that connects to this lower bolt for here, which creates that connection between ground for this. If you don't have that, it won't charge. So make sure you're not missing that. 
Okay, we're gonna have to remove this pulley because I have to get this screen off to be able to pull this off altogether. So I'll try one size fits all. Okay, four long bolts here. There's a couple little spacers. Be careful, make sure you put everything back the way you took it apart. This just free floats until we can take this off. Okay, now we just got a few bolts around the outer edges here. Again, document and keep uh, a good couple of pictures before you take things apart so you know how everything was. Like this little, uh, isolator here or whatever it's called used to have a metal tab that would go under this under the bolt that since broke off so I just slide it under and bolt it down just to ground it out so little things like that keep keep attention to how it was so when you go to put this back together you're not scratching your head I've done this so many times and I have so many videos of this for different reasons I can kind of do it on the fly without cheating. I will tell you though, this is the first time I've had to uh, deal with a stator issue. I've never had the magnets come loose or the stator go bad, which is one of the two things that's happened in this case. How do I know that? Because it's the only thing left. All right, we should be able to pull this right off. Camera's rolling. Boom. Not too bad inside, probably because I just rebuilt it not too long ago. This should just come right off. All right, so we're down to the flywheel here. Next thing we wanna do is get these coils out of the way so we don't damage them. Luckily those are tethered with some wires, so I won't drop them on the floor like the rectifier that I took off to not damage. Hey, shit happens, right? Stuff happens. All right, all right. So here we go. We don't need to remove this if we're replacing the 
flywheel. Let me bring the other flywheel over and see if there's a chance that it's going to be the same. It entirely looks different from afar. Whether or not it's interchangeable, I don't know. Just because this has holes in it and this one doesn't, doesn't mean that it can't be exchanged. But, let's see. Let's pull this off. That would fit on there if need be. Just the only concern would be our magnet for our spark. Ah, totally different. Yep, that's where we're different. Okay. This has the magnet for the coils, whereas that has a different type of ignition system. It actually has fuel injection and electronic coils with pickups. So that's, uh, that's why there's no way that this magnet will work. Our magnet. This this flywheel will not be interchangeable, which is fine. Like I said, we'll uh, figure out what the problem is with this one, or it might just be the stator. Like I said. Sprung loose. Now for the big reveal. Are the magnets separated or is it the stator? Let's see. Whoa, look at that. Holy cow. I'm glad I got cameras rolling for this, guys. Look at the demolition. Oh my goodness. How did that happen? Oh, the magnets broke off. And got jammed up and wrecked the stator. Wow, look at that. This is also a good time to replace this front seal if you need to. Well, that's quite interesting. I'm hoping that these magnets here are the same as here so I can replace them without having to order a whole new flywheel. Um, wow, wasn't expecting that. They appear to be the same though. I think that's going to be no problem. Let's go ahead and remove that stator and then uh, match that up to see if that's going to work. Wow. Well, that explains why she wasn't charging. Actually, let me, uh, let me grab a little bit of air and blow that off so you can get a better look at what's going on there. I'm glad it didn't break the case. You can see some scratches right there. is a magnet stuck down here.
These are all chunks of magnet. That's crazy. Maybe we gotta remove it all together. This is a magnet here. And look at how it munched that all up. Wow. How many more times am I going to say wow? Okay, here is the unit off the other one. I'll be damned if that doesn't look the same. I was pretty sure I was able to use it, so. run this in by hand. I don't want to risk snapping those screws. All right. Our replacement is on. We're going to clean out all this mess. Let's connect this cover back up. So now we got to deal with these magnets. All right, so here's the problem that I'm dealing with with this. Is at least, I'm going to clean this out, but at least two of these magnets are missing. And possibly these may be damaged. So we need to clean this up really good in the parts washer. And see what we got, see if there's any scoring or damage on these other ones. I'm hoping that some of these are savable because I need to try to get these out, basically break this glue. Imagine I'm gonna need like a piece of wood and a hammer to tap these and hopefully break that bond without breaking the magnets to be able to re-glue them to this one. So, and there's also a positive and a negative. Every other one, uh, they have to be in a certain order in, in that way. So let me clean this up and see what we're working with and see if we can't. Hopefully a couple of these are good, so if I damage one or two of these, taking them off, I can get the right ones that need to be here uh, and figure out which one's positive and negative and all that stuff. So a little, little bit of work and we'll figure it out. All right. So after looking this over a little bit, trying to get all these magnetic pieces off, uh, we've got kind of a mixed bag here. It appears that a couple of these magnets are good. This one looks okay. This one looks okay. This one looks okay. This one does not look okay. This one, as you can see, is ground up. So we've got half the magnets look like they're good. The other half are not. So, which means we're going to need three of these magnets out of here, which they are the same. They appear to be the same. I'm sure they are. To salvage this. And we need to re-glue them. So, 
what I'm going to do, knowing that we have to remove this magnet, because it's no good, I'm going to start with this being my test unit of knocking it off there and see what it's going to take to get one of those off. Uh, I'm thinking a hard plastic or wood block with a hammer is going to be the best way to go about it. Maybe a little shock. Hopefully won't break it. If I can get away with not breaking that one that's already damaged, I feel confident in the other ones. All right. I'm just going to start with this little piece of wood here. Just give it a give it a crack and see if it breaks loose. Well, I broke the wood. As I feared, negative. All right, gotta work our way up in aggressiveness. Let's get this out of the way before I drop that on the floor. Let's try a hammer on a hammer. Negative. So we're going to up our hammer game. Let's get something a little harder. All right, I feel this is going to go bad. But yeah, as I thought. Crack that magnet. Unfortunately, part of it is still sticking. This is going to be fun. See part of the magnet still stuck there. So getting those off the other flywheel is definitely going to be pretty close to impossible without damage. Which may mean I'm going to need a flywheel. but I'm going to give it my all. And I'll tell you how I'm going to do it. What I'm going to do is find something big and round that goes around this whole circumference, maybe a block of wood, I don't know. And I'm going to put it in my press and push down on all of these at once evenly until they all let go. And I'm gonna open it up and hope that I can salvage three of them. Just trying to put individual pressure on any of these just isn't gonna work. Maybe I can make something exactly that size shape wooden. I'll put something in here for some support and then push down here with the press. See what happens. All right, here's my plan. Got this piece of wood that's going to put pressure on those three and not these three. I've got this little spacer here to hold that side. I'm going to set this up so it pushes here on this side, which will equally push down on these three. Hopefully busting them loose. Will this work? I have no idea. But I'm gonna give it a good old college try. 
before I order up a $250 flywheel. So let's get this spaced up. Actually, raise this up. Should have done this first. Not gonna lie, I'll be pretty amazed if this works. Let's just give it a little help there with that. Figure this will give it a its least chance of cracking those magnets of course every crack oh okay something happened we either busted one loose or wrecked the whole thing oh we got one out guys unscathed all right so pressure rather than shock oh look at this one came loose too aha there's hope yet. So we're gonna go ahead and try to get all of these loose since uh, we don't know which ones we need yet. Positives, negatives. Let me just go for a two for this time. Not gonna lie, I'm really surprised this worked. pieces of the glue. Nice, nice. We got two left. Ooh. That one sounds like it might have broke. Nope. Wow. Kidding me. This is just the pieces of the glue. Wow. All right. We got five of the six out. We're going to leave that sixth one in there. Because we only need three. I definitely got what we need. Now I need to find out which which goes where as far as positive negative. And to do that, let's just drop those on the floor. I guess the edge of the magnet will repel or attract another magnet and then we'll put a mark on it accordingly. So this one wants to take the magnet so I'm just gonna put a dot on that one which means this one has to be the opposite should be repelling the magnet as you can see I try to go to that corner it doesn't want to go to it it wants to go to the one next to it and stick to it so that one gets a dot so now I need one more that this sticks to. Sticks to it. 
sticks to it. Repels. There's a force there. Okay, so that's one without a mark. Repels. That's one without a mark. Repels. That's one without a mark. This one sticks. That one sticks. The ones that stick get dots. So dot. And two of these is what I need because I need one with a dot and two without. Boom. So the layout needs to go. No dot. Dot. No dot. Evenly spaced and glued in. Okay, so next step, I'm gonna run these on the wire wheel and clean them up. Getting ready for some JB Weld. I'm gonna get the rest of this off and wire wheel that so it's down to nice clean bare metal. We're gonna try gluing these puppies on. those down with some acetone before I put the glue on them. So we're looking good there. Now we just gotta clean up the inside here. I got those glued in the best I can get them pretty much evenly spaced without measuring them exactly but got them about the same distance as the other ones and I think I recorded it but this is what I used just mixed up a nice little two-part epoxy I think we're doing good So I'm going to go ahead and let that set up overnight and uh, we'll put it back together. Got our replacement stator on there and we should be good to go. While I'm in here out of the rebuild kit I never change this front seal because it usually never leaks or rarely leaks because I didn't want to take this off when I did the minor rebuild so while we got it off now I saved the seal I'm going to go ahead and pull that seal out and replace it. So we got that also that will uh, will be a new addition to it and then I'll have a follow-up video putting this back together and we'll uh, measure the charging system and see if it's charging all right guys that's it for this video on Walker stators have a good one 
set up these spring clamps to hold those on really tight while that stuff sets up. I feel pretty confident that this stuff will get that uh, get the job done. I wire wheeled both sides, wiped both sides down with uh, acetone, mixed this stuff up good. Pretty good repair in my opinion.